1937, the Nation of Islam, under the leadership of Elijah Muhammad, established Temple No. 4, the temple located at 9th Street in Northwest Washington, D.C., which served as the base for the Nation of Islam in the District of Columbia. In 1960, the temple was moved to its current location following the death of Elijah Muhammad in 1975. His son, Imam Warathuddin Muhammad, moved his followers in a new direction, and the temple number four became known as Masjid Muhammad. With us today to discuss this rich history is Sister Bahija Abdul Salam. Sister Bahija is a native Washingtonian and has spent the last 20, excuse me, 37 years as an active member of Masjid Muhammad. Actually, active is an understatement. I, I would say that uh, Sister Bahija has been involved with everything from uh, Islamic prison service to the geriatric daycare center to numerous events and interfaith boards and committees in the Washington, D.C. area. Also in the discussion today is Atiba Mednu. Uh, Atiba is a native Washingtonian. Uh, his family joined the Nation of Islam under the leadership of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and he is a lobbyist in Washington, D.C., and became a member with his family of Temple No. 4 shortly after his birth in 1972. So we're really grateful to have you. And Amir Muhammad, who is the historian, curator, co-founder of American Muslim Islamic Museum. Amir, what is it? America's Islamic Heritage, Heritage Museum. Heritage Museum. Uh, well, alhamdulillah, and also with us is Imam bin Abdul Haq. He is the deputy uh, imam at Masjid Muhammad and has served there uh, for almost 40 years. I want to open the uh, discussion up very quickly with you to talk about what is significant to you about these 50 years of Masjid Muhammad in the nation's capital. I'll start with Sister Bahija because she, she, she was there. Well, and one thing, Brother Imam, I've been involved for 42 years. 42 years? 42 years, right. yes. It's what you call set the record straight. All right, all right. <laughs> it has been really an honor and a pleasure to be a member of Masjid Muhammad, and especially um, under the leadership of Imam Warfti Muhammad. Mm. May Allah be pleased with him because he was such a wonderful leader and a real visionary. If you want to see a person who had vision and who could see and take us where we needed to go. Um, what's so important in our community is the most important mission, one of the most, and I would say the most, was our interfaith relig uh, relationships. Mm. In 19... I think it was the early, the late 70s, mm -hmm. our first visit was to a Baptist church. Uh, members of our community, Sister Clara and Brother Benjamin Muhammad. Yes. Um, now, now I'm going to stop you because when you talk about, see, because I know a little bit about this history. Very I was just, good. I was, I, I, I was real young. I don't know how young I was. But <laughs> we talk about the impact of this community. Uh, in the 70s doing interfaith work. Mm -hmm. uh, but you mentioned two people, uh, Brother Ben and Sister Claire. They also were doing something else, I think, that was unique, which was? They were working in the community with the ch and adopting children. And adopting, adopting children. Adopting children, And yes. I know, the, yes. I know some, some fantastic stuff. But adopting children mm -hmm. at a time uh, when maybe social services weren't, weren't what they are today, mm -hmm. and they were taking in children, and these were Muslims in the Washington area. So let me, don't let me yes. stop you, but, but I, and I know uh, sometimes they, p people were, were giving them a hard time. I won't, I won't say anymore, but go ahead. But they were really loved in the community where they lived, and um, one, I think it was a Sunday, I'm not really sure, some members from Masjid Muhammad were invited to go to visit the church in the neighborhood. Um, so that was really the beginning of our interfaith relationships. And Imam Muhammad organized what was called the New Earth Team. So the next people we met were the uh, Sheikh Damas, I think that is correct, Benjamin? I think so. 
downwards. Yes, the seat downwards. And then in 1978, we were asked to become a member of the Interfaith Conference of, of Metropolitan, Metropolitan Washington. Washington, right. Initially, it was uh, the Christian and Jewish community, but then they realized that something was missing because of the Abrahamic faith that they needed Muslims. This so, is, this, this, yes. this. so I, I know people don't think about, you know, a, a traditionally black uh, Muslim experience mm -hmm. uh, being at the cornerstone not only of uh, reaching out in, in their own community, but an interfaith dialogue. Uh, Atiba, um, you, you, were, you were born in this history. Yes, sir. What was it like growing up as a Muslim, um, uh, born in 1972? What was it like growing up in this community? Well, you know, one of the things that I appreciate that comes to mind when you ask that question, first off, is the perception and the awareness today of Americans when we fast Ramadan. Mm. So that's maybe one of the biggest things that I would see has been in terms of the growth, in terms of the awareness and education of people here in America, particularly after we finish fasting or when we begin fasting um, now, sometimes the meteorologists or even the anchors will acknowledge that the new moon has been sighted, beginning yes. and ending um, the a fast. Month of but I think they also, too, just kind of piggybacking off of the history. Oh, we have to dovetail because it's a Muslim <laughs> show. <laughs> All right, but well, go ahead. But going back to the history, um, you know, in terms of Masjid Muhammad, you know, I, I'm a graduate of Dunbar High School, which is in the same neighborhood as, right. as, as Masjid Muhammad. So it was very, un, not very um, it was impossible, basically, for anyone who I went to school with not to know that I went to the Masjid. But it was also impossible for anyone not to know where the Masjid was. Mm. And I believe that when you look at the pioneers and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now, in when terms you call of the, now, by, by the way, pioneers is a word that, that we, we know. What, what, what does pioneers mean in this sense? Well, we know the definition of pioneer is one who comes first or one who does something first. And so we use the word pioneer to recognize the uh, Muslims, the brothers and sisters uh, who built um, the Nation of Islam with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They were the pioneers in a sense, like the pioneers or the settlers who came to America, we use the term pioneer, we use the same term terminology to, to define those Muslims who helped to build the Nation of Islam and helped to establish the community that we now call of African American Muslims, and particularly here in, in the United States. And that legacy, that history of those pioneers and of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is cemented in the fact that Temple Number 4 was the first building that was built under Honorable Elijah Muhammad in terms of that history, which is where mm. I was trying to... Well, you know, in fact, Amir, while we're talking about... The, because this, this work of the nation laid the groundwork for so much work and, the, and Imam Warathdin Muhammad making this tremendous transition. I was a student at Howard University uh, when Imam Muhammad uh, took over the leadership. It was earth-shaking, moving from the concepts of the nation of Islam, uh, at least for us, into this wider piece, but um, you, Atiba, you just mentioned this piece about the, this place in history. Amir, can you share with us, just because I know you've got a, you've got a piece of this in the context, what, what was there as Muslim institutions? Matter of fact, Master Muhammad is the first and only uh, masjid or mosque that was built from the ground up for, under the leadership of Honorable Elijah Muhammad. All other uh, masjids, which was about 76, on the 77 temples, none of them was built from the ground up. Only Masjid Muhammad um, was built from the ground up. And it wasn't until the early 80s that a Masjid was built from the ground up under the leadership of Imam Worthy Muhammad. So Masjid Muhammad is the first. Mm. And only now this Muhammad. is te temple, number four, temple which, number four, which now occupies a street that used to be called 4th Street, 4th Street, which is now Islamic Way. Islamic Way. When, when, Imam, when did that happen? Uh, first, let me on behalf of the Imam Talib Sharif, if yes. you don't mind me saying so. He wanted to extend the greetings to everyone. So the new Imam. Yes, new Imam at, elect, uh, at Master Muhammad. Wonderful. Imam Talib Sharif said to give all of you all the greetings. So assalamu alaykum. Wa alaykum assalam. He apologized he couldn't make it here today. So on behalf of the Imam, I just wanted to extend that. But now, I, but, go ahead. But Islamic Way. Now, I mean, Islamic but, Way was uh, once 4th Street Northwest. 1519 4th Street is the address of Master Muhammad. It was renamed 20 years ago, approximately. Mm -hmm petition the city to have that portion renamed Islamic Way. So that now, as, as the, the history in this community, uh, that the street is named for, for that purpose. 